So most golfers get driver in their hand, they get set up to the golf ball, take dead aim, and they see that left to right shape, maybe clinging onto the edge of the fairway, but very often slicing to the right and getting in trouble. Now, in today's video, I've got a tip for you, and most importantly, it's a tip from John Rahm, current world number one, and reigning US Masters champion as to how you're going to hit your driver longer, straighter, maybe even with a little draw without actually changing your golf swing. Now, John Rahm, unbelievable player and a great driver of the ball, predominantly always hits the ball left to right. So straight away, I would say you don't have to hit the ball straight to be a great driver of the ball. But going to the Masters, he said that he fell in order to win he needed to learn, yes, learn how to draw the ball, but it's something he was never particularly good at. And it was a very, very simple little tweak at address that allowed him to go from a little fade to a draw at will with this simple little change. So let's look at how John Ron would normally set up and how often golfers set up with driver that maybe makes them hit that left to right to begin with. So they tend to get the ball in, uh, the club head in, sorry, right behind the golf ball, that ball slightly forward in the stance. And with John, he would tend to have a little bit of spine tilt away, but most club golfers, as they move the club forward to the golf ball, they tend to move the body forward. And as a result of that, tend to get those shoulders going a little bit left of target. Now, just in case you don't understand what causes that left to right shape or that slice. Now, if we look at that previous shot I hit on Trackman, the low point of the swing was nearly nine inches ahead. So the club traveled down six degrees. The club face was one degree open to the path and the path was nearly four degrees out to in. So almost creating that kind of slicey movement across the golf ball. And obviously, if you want to fade the ball, you need to make sure that you've got those kind of numbers with the open club face and the out to in path, but make sure it's just small numbers so it's controllable. But if you want to hit the ball straighter or draw the ball, ideally, we'd like to see the path more from the inside and that club face closing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely there's a lot to work on there. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But John, and I'm giving John Rahm credit for this, I would even go as far back as say Mo Norman did this years and years ago, and it was absolutely brilliant. So what John spoke about is rather than setting up with the club head right behind the golf ball, he might even just nudge the ball slightly further forward in his stance, but he actually moved the club head kind of a couple of club heads back from the ball. And as he did that, not only is it moving the club head back, but it's actually starting to move those shoulders a little bit closed, which is going to help you swing the club a little bit more to the right. It's also then going to get the low point behind the golf ball. But the really clever bit is if you move back two club heads, everything's closed. The low point of your golf swing is now back here. As the club continues around the arc, that club face has got a little bit longer to start closing, okay? Now, I've done other videos on kind of what the path is important because when you're hitting down on the golf ball and that low point's ahead, the club is actually moving slightly more from the inside as the club's traveling down. As you hit up, the club's moving out to in. So again, it's brilliant because as we move back and the body's closing off, we're going to swing more from the inside, which actually by the time the club travels up to the ball is going to be more straight. The club heads then got longer to close. So this is brilliant. We're going to change path and face just with this simple tweak at address. So we know what we're trying to do. We understand the logic involved. So this is dead easy. So in theory, as long as I set myself up, nudge the ball slightly further forward, and I'm gonna go one, two club heads back. 
body feels very, very different for me here. And then we're going to make that swing. And we can see a very, very different shape of golf shot. So 8.6 inches behind, clubs traveled up six degrees. Now the club face is showing slightly open there. That was a little bit out the toe, but the path 1.8 degrees from the inside and 206 carry and 225 total. So that was very, very different. Now, just the way Trackman measures the curve on the face will show that club face looking a little bit different. Now, we're going to do that again though. So we're going to set up, We've got that ball forward. Now I'm aiming at the middle of the fairway at the moment here. So I'm going to go one, two club heads back. I mean, I don't mind setting up a little back. That feels a long way back for me, but does it give me what I'm after? Again, strike a little bit lower that time. But again, we can see the ball curving right to left. We can see low point 5.1 inches behind. Angle of attack, clubs traveled up four degrees. Club face four and a half degrees closed. Path five degrees from the inside. And the strikes cost me a little bit on carry. But we can definitely see a hugely different shape of golf shot. And honestly, I use this Maybe not quite that exaggerated with a lot of the pupils I work with, but if you can get that ball in a different part of the arc, because most golfers will tell me they feel like they release the golf club. So they get that club face closing. The problem for most golfers, and comment below if you feel this is you, that when you start in there and the club's coming down on the arc and you see that club face is trying to close, but it gets to the ball open. So that ball's gonna set off right, and then it's gonna shape out that way. So if we simply just move that ball further around the arc, we're giving ourselves a little bit longer to let that club head close. And even if you don't get it closed, it might still be open, but it's gonna be much less open than it would have been. And then even those bad ones might be a baby fade rather than a big slice. But we're going to get there. We've got that set up. We go one, two behind, and make sure that you just don't do it with the hands. You've got to move the whole body to get that club back there. So we're back. I'm actually going to aim fractionally further right as well now, because I expect this will make me draw it a little bit more. The big hooky one, very, very exaggerated. We can see low point behind, club traveling up, club face very, very closed at 8.1 degrees, eight degrees from the inside and some good distance, but not a fairway finder. Now this is where I love this drill, is if you're somebody who slices the ball, you probably need that amount of exaggeration. Now, John Rahm talks about he needs that amount and if the number one player in the world needs it, don't feel bad if you need that much. But let's say you're someone like me who, as you do that, you might go from a, a cutty one to a big draw, maybe even a hook. You could then say, right, all I'm going to do now is instead of going the two club heads behind, I'm just going to go one club head behind and start there, put that swing on it. And we can see that one definitely curving a little bit less right to left. Now it was a little out the toe, so it's showing there that I've hit up just slightly. Club face was actually very, very square. The toe strike will have helped, so it will have been slightly closed, but swinging from the inside and just a really, really good result. So definitely for me, the more you slice the ball, there's that potential that the more you could move that club head back, it's closing the body off. The ball's just much further around that arc and you can stand up there, put that swing on it. So for me, maybe you don't need to exaggerate it quite as much as John Rahm. And that's definitely not to say I'm better than John Rahm, but we're gonna get there. Comment below on that last statement from mine. I'm gonna move back just one club length, commit to the swing. Not much shape on that one, maybe one of the straightest ones I've ever hit. Low point three inches behind, clubs traveled up two degrees, 
from the inside with a slightly closed club face. Only 220 carry and 231. Not full speed there, but you can see if you can use that little drill that John Rahm used to help him win the Masters. Doesn't use it a lot, but we might see him use it more now. That could transform your driver. Get you stopping that slice, maybe even that little fadey one that you don't love the look of. Get you hit it straighter, maybe even those draws that you thought you'd never ever hit. But if it works for John Rahm, you start using it. Comment below, let me know if it's helped your driving. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss any of my videos going forward. See you all soon.